Hello, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to our live feed update for October 31st. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I'm here today to update you on everything that happened yesterday on the Big Brother 25 live feeds. It was day 90 in the house. Day 90. 10 left. And uh, we had a veto ceremony that barely happened. And uh, some more plans, some more dastardly deeds going on in the game. Uh, if you want to know the latest uh, uh, psychological uh, manipulation uh, uh, taking place to try to prevent Felicia from winning uh, the Final Four HOH competition. So, let's get into it. Of course, if you haven't already, tickets for the live show. This is basically your last chance. The first live show is tomorrow night in Brea, uh, where we will be watching Survivor live and then a live podcast after the fact. Lots of Survivor players will be in attendance, so come and join us. And then Thursday night, we'll be watching the Thursday night uh, episode, eviction episode, live in Brea. Live podcast after the fact. Big Brother alumni will be there. I will be there. Other podcasters will be there. Go do it. Now let's talk about the day. Um, so, as you may know, Matt, the HOH, Jag, the veto holder, Sari and Felish on the block. Sari is the person that they are targeting. They have not explicitly or really in any way told Sari, but, uh, but Sari basically knows uh, they can't really can't really uh, trick her. Um, and they've come up with a plan. They came up with this plan the night before. It's called Operation Pressure Cracker, um, where the intent is to make Felicia like psychologically crack under the pressure of their onslaught. Um, to the point where she's unable to sleep and therefore unable to perform well enough to win the final four HOH, uh, thus guaranteeing them the final three or close to it because they're sure that the final four veto will be physical enough that they'll be able to beat her. Um, so they had come up with that plan the night before, uh, giddy about it. Um, and in case you were like, okay, well, maybe they were a little tipsy. Maybe they were just a little excited. You know, in the light of day, surely, surely they're not going to continue discussing this plan. They're not going to like, still, they're going to be like, wow, what a silly idea we joked about last night, right? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, bright and early in the morning, they uh, hang out in the scary room. And they talk about how Operation Pressure Cook Cracker is uh, still a go. When are we going to start? Yeah. Uh, they're in the scary room together. They're hanging out. Felicia comes in. She says hi, uh, as she does, saying good morning. Uh, and they're kind of like awkward and quiet until she leaves. Um, and after she does leave, they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she keeps coming in here. Um, yeah, we're in here because we don't want to be moving. Always like, yeah, she's gonna be so paranoid by about two p.m. today. Um, Operation Paranoia is on. Jack's like, no, Operation Pressure Cracker. That's the name. <laughs> it's such a good name. They go over the plan again. Now Matt needs to, Matt, you just need to take one for the team and keep Felicia up all night. That's like, oh, They're, they joke about how Matt, Jack's like, Matt didn't even want to do it. <laughs> We're like, dude, you got to take one for the team. You're not competing. Matt's like, yeah, yeah, I got to take one for the team. Uh, so, um, yes. Plan is still on. Um, Suri is going to make a campaign to Bowie. Uh, it doesn't really go anywhere, of course. 
Um, but uh, she goes uh, upstairs uh, and she's hanging out with Matt and Jag again. Um, and hey, don't worry. There's more. We're the good people. More trash talking. Um, some of the particularly weird ones that made the rounds today were that Matt was talking to them there and he was like uh, talking about America because when would Matt stop talking about America? Uh, he says, I don't think America is a receptionist. But now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think she's that smart. Like, she, no, she's not because she didn't even know how to cook or do laundry or clean. So obviously, she's not that smart. It's because, you know, women are only smart. If they know how to cook and clean and do laundry for you, Matt, right? Am I right, bro? Um, they go on to talk about Corey. And uh, they're making fun of Corey for, for wearing a suit. Remember when he wore the suit? Um, uh, I think it was Wednesday before his eviction. He wore the suit. Kind of a reference to Kevin Jacobs. Um, and, uh, and Bowie's like, yeah, but he changed out of it right away because people didn't react the way he expected. And Matt's like, yeah, he probably thought people would be like, what? But they were, but we were just like, um, why are you in a suit? Yeah. Like, don't be an idiot. Matt says, and then he wore America's outfit on eviction night that time. Remember that one? He wore America's outfit, which is interesting. Like, what are you bragging that you can fit in your girl's clothes? I just thought it was odd. Always like, yeah, it was a bit strange. A bit strange. Um, you know. <laughs> Matt and Jag talk a bit later. Um, Jag is talking to Matt about Bowie and how she's upset. She was upset about the luxury competition they did where, where Jag helped Matt win the $5,000. Uh, and he's like, ugh, can't believe she was upset at me about that. Um, and he says, uh, he says, Matt, have you watched season 16? Matt's like, no, like you should watch season 16. That's my favorite season. It's when I came into this, the one thing I wanted to do was be like them on season 16 because they stayed loyal until the end. They could have taken Victoria, but they didn't. And then this is what happened. Cody got invited to all stars because of how legendary they were. And then in All Stars, everyone wanted to work with Cody because he chose his hitman. And I didn't even watch All Stars, but I was told by my friend that apparently it was really boring because everyone wanted to work with Cody because he was so loyal. It was like set himself up in his previous season to do well in All Stars. Like, apparently, get this, he didn't even have to win comps for himself. Could you imagine? Could you imagine somebody playing this game without having to win like 13 competitions between the three of you? That would be wild. And let's also ignore the fact that the committee won all the competitions. <laughs> so... So uh, Sari and Felicia continue to talk. Felicia's getting annoyed. She's, she's picking up on a clear vibe in the house, which is that she's being ignored. Uh, she's being laughed at behind her back. She's being talked about behind her back. Uh, they're plotting how to like psychologically mess with her, make her crack under the pressure. And uh, she's, she's kind of like annoyed about this. Um, there's also a funny moment where uh, Suri and Felicia are talking about Jared. 
because they're talking about like where things went wrong for them. Of course, Sari, uh, not quite recognizing the role Jared had uh, to play in her own downfall. But, uh, you know, fair enough. Um, and Sari makes a funny comment. Uh, she says, uh, oh, Felicia, you're going to love my son. He's just like Jared. <laughs> Pretty, pretty spot on. You know, if they, they Cassie, it's about as close as you can come to my son is Jared. Um, so then Felicia, who is annoyed, she's hanging out with Jag and Bowie in the kitchen for like a while. Um, and it's awkward again. It's just awkward. They just, they're not speaking to her. Uh, and by the way, the veto ceremony has come and gone. Like, it, nothing obviously was happening with that. Um, so it's, again, it's awkward. It's, they're in the kitchen. It's, it's, so, it's just silence. And, uh, and so Felicia's just like, you know, she's Felicia. She says, and, and Bowie's there too. She says, Jag, I'm, try, I'm just trying to figure something out. Have we missed something? What do you mean? Well, we feel like there's three people over here and two people over here and we're just irrelevant factors in the house right now. What, what do you mean? D did I say something? D did I explicitly tell you that, I, that I'm trying to make you crack under the pressure? I'm pretty sure I didn't. I'm pretty sure I've hit, I've hit it pretty well. She says, no, you didn't say something. That's the problem. You're the final three, and you're just waiting to negate two of the bodies. No. I've, I've just been hanging out the same way as I always have been. She says, nope, there's a difference. Well... We, we can disagree on that then. Uh, now, at this point, Bowie books it. Out of the kitchen. She doesn't want any of that heat. She doesn't want any of that smoke. Felicia says, I have literally stood in this kitchen for 30 minutes. And it's like I'm not even standing here, Jag. Jack says, I, I am not trying to ignore you. She says, don't get offended, Jag. I, I, I'm not. It just, it just feels like you're saying something. I am. I am saying something. I guess I'm just wondering what it'll be like for the fourth person when one of us is gone. Are you going to isolate them? Well, I, I'm not trying to, like, make anyone feel isolated. This, that's not, like, I'm pretty sure I haven't used that word. I'm pretty, I just crack. I'm trying to make you crack, but not isolate you. That, he didn't say that. Um, he said, I'm not trying to make anyone feel isolated. I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just confused by the line of questioning. Like, I'm literally just making food, you know? Like, really, anyone could say, hey, why aren't you talking to me? But I'm literally just hanging out making food. So, like, none of it is obviously intentional. So I, I haven't had hours of conversation about how I am intentionally trying to make you crack under the pressure. None of that is intentional. I'd never want anyone to feel isolated. I've never, like, left a room when you entered. You know, just coming up with things that he's not doing to deny, even though that's never what she said he was doing. Um, she sa he says, uh, you know, if you felt like I've isolated you in some way or, or, or singled you out, uh, for me, it hasn't been intentional in any way. 
I'm I'm I am not trying to isolate you or exclude you. You know, I think that maybe just with less people, you know, in the house. I've just been hanging out with Matt a lot. And hey, you and Sari have been hanging out a lot. You know? So I just I don't I don't want anyone to feel excluded in this game. I I know what that feels like. And it sucks. So you know, I will make more of an effort to make you feel included in the future if that's what you need. <laughs> this this guy. <laughs> Can we just talk about how extremely unnecessary all of this is? Like, we're talking about a plot. Because, like, the, 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 best, the best interpretation of this conversation is that, is that it's all strategy. It's all part of the plan to make Felicia less likely to win the HOH comp, which is absurd. Let's, let's call it what it is. It's absolutely absurd that any of this conversation or this behavior will make Felicia less likely to win the HOH competition. That is not what's happening here. <laughs> this is not how you prevent somebody from winning an HOH competition. There is a reason why this is perfectly in line with the, the way that he has treated the last few people that he sent out the door. Uh, this is just... This is bad. It's bad. It's completely unnecessary. It's coming from a place of so much power. He is in a position of so much power. And just like beyond the bad game move that it is, it's, it's such a bad, like, what are you doing? Like, how are you not just trying to shore up jury votes? You're so sure I assume that you can beat Bowie in a final two that you're just actively burning everything possible because you can't own it. Like, it's just, oh, so gross. Oh man. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Like, Yikes. Uh, I saw I saw that um, Heisem uh, uh, had, had put out a, a video. He uh, you know, great minds think alike uh, about the Stanford prison experiment. Uh, he says he's going to call them out on finale night. So um, woo finale might be fun. Um, it, that's if they let him, of course. But but Heisem go for it anyway. Who cares? Make your make your statement. Um. So, uh, so that happens. Um. There's another fun interaction that goes, on. and and it's also just buff. People are like, this happens all. This doesn't. This is, again. I've I've watched this show. I've watched the feeds for like twenty years. Uh, close to it. Um, and, you know. In the old days, things got bad, for sure. Um, in different ways. But anybody that tries to claim this is the norm, it's not. This is not the norm. This is not how people normally act. Uh, things have gotten kind of bad, especially in the last few seasons. Um, but not this bad. Um, you know... <laughs> Like even, even people like Jackson Mickey di weren't doing stuff like this. They were doing other stuff earlier in the season, stuff like all kinds of other stuff. Um, even Paul at the end of their season wasn't doing stuff like this. They were doing stuff earlier in the season. But people are, who are like, oh, this is just the end game. This is just what happens in the end game. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is... This is uniquely Jag. Um, 
So Jag, Matt, and Bowie, they talk. Uh, Matt says uh, they're joking around about, hey, guess who? America. Um, and Matt's like, we're going to get canceled. Bowie's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're all canceled now. Uh, and Matt's like, well, wouldn't they tell us if we were getting canceled? Uh, and they're like, no. No, they wouldn't tell us. Oh. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're right. You're right. Because Kyle. Yeah. No, you're right. Awkward silence. Bowie tries to break it with a joke. We, we come out of the house with less followers. <laughs> <laughs> Funny joke. Uh, Tag's like, uh, yeah, I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even care. Just go back to my life. I wouldn't even care. Um, you can always tell when they start to get concerned. Does it change their behavior? Mm, not very often. Um. Jag, Matt, Suri, and Bowie talk. Um, they talk about Felicia calling Jag out. Jag, again, quote-unquote apologizes. Well, I've never intended to make you feel isolated, but if that's how you have felt, then I will make an effort. Essentially gaslighting, uh, lying, and then uh, martyring yourself uh, to make them feel guilty. You know. The classics. Um, and uh, they have a new plan as well, which is that uh, the, the plan is to convince Felicia and Suri that winning the Final Four HOH is a bad idea. <clears throat> that if you win the Final Four HOH, you're not allowed to compete in part one of the Final Three HOH. Which, mm, that's not enough, because part one of the final three HOH is physical endurance. That's not Felicia's part anyway. So, they have to swap the order. Okay, part one of the final three HOH is the mental part. So, if you win the final four HOH, you don't get to compete in the mental part of the final three HOH. You go straight to the physical part. Oof. That sucks, doesn't it? They're trying to convince Suri of this. Suri doesn't really, she's like, oh, that's weird. Suri doesn't really know the show that well. Possible that this could theoretically work on Suri. Um, Suri goes back to Felicia. And Felicia explains what she said to Jag. Suri asks Felicia, what are you, what are you, what's your plan if you win the Final Four HOH? She says, Matt and Jag are going on the block. She says, add that to your speech. <laughs> How many times have you been on the block? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push for you if you're there, Felicia. What's your speech against Jag? And she, she gives a, a good portion of her speech. I'm not going to say the whole thing, but the basics are, she says, I knew I'd be underestimated and, un, un, and undervalued uh, in the game because of my age. Everyone has been comfortable putting me up because of that which is why I've been nominated seven times. I've survived seven times. I made the biggest move in the game when I backdoored Heisem, and I was just myself. Competitions weren't my strong suit. My strong suit was people. And she goes on. Uh, and they start talking about the competition layout. And Ceri's asking her, like, what about like winning that Final Four HOH? And Felicia says, well, how it works is that the Final Four HOH gets to play in the Final Three veto. Or final three HOH. And um, there's part one. And then the three people compete in part one. And then the person who wins goes straight to part three. And then the remaining two people compete in part two. And the winner of that goes to part three. And then the winner of part three wins the final three HOH. She explains it correctly. Felicia knows how this works. And Sari says, well, I hope you make it. Again, Sari kind of knows. Um, so this plan to try to, to trick Felicia 
not super likely to work at this point, considering she she knows the show. She's been watching for years. Um, she's been, she's probably watched more seasons than like the three of them combined. Uh, so uh, we'll see, I guess. But she does know how it works. Um, meanwhile, Matt, Jag, and Bowie they're going over again. Uh, they don't they don't call it the lies they want to sell. They call it what are the truths that we want to sell to Felicia? What are the, what are the truths that we want to pass along? Um, and so they go over the, their truths, uh, that if you win the final four HOH, you don't play in the mental comp in, fi in the final three, you only play in the physical comp. So we're going to be like, we want to win the final four HOH because we want to go straight to the physical part of, of the final three HOH. And Matt, oh, 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 Matt, you should go to Felicia and act like you're pissed that you can't win the final four HOH because that means you have to play in the mental part of the final three HOH. Oh, we're geniuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to her and be like, ah, oh, I can't believe I can't play in the final four HOH. Because, because, damn, I get, I have to, I, I have to play the mental part of final three HOH now. Can't go straight to the physical part. Like what would happen if I won that final four HOH? Damn. And they talk about this for hours. They go over it again and again. They even go through a mock version of the conversation where Matt, plays out that role, and Jag plays the role of Felicia, uh, mannerisms and all. Uh, and weirdly, they cut away from this. I don't know why. Weird. Uh, and that was our day. <laughs> that was, that was our day. Oh, God. Well, hey, Daniel, Just stop. Daniel. Already. Daniel. Stop. Um, so there we are. That's what, that's what I've got for, for the day. Um, I'll be back. I'll be live tonight. Twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong. Hang out with me. Also, let me know this. Send me, send me uh, Twitters or whatever. Let me know. Do you actually type in twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong if you've ever been there? Or, because I don't. I've, I never type in website address, especially if I have to do a slash. Like if I have to find somebody on, I'm just going to Google Taryn Twitch. You know what I mean? Is that what people do? Because I say twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong all the time and I, it feels bad in my mouth. I don't like doing it. <laughs> Can I just say I'm on Twitch? Does that work? You know what I mean? <laughs> like it should, right? Let me know. Um, <laughs> like, what are we in 2005? Like, I don't know. Why am I reading out a website address? Um. <laughs> But I'll be there tonight uh, to watch tonight's episode. Tonight's Halloween episode of Big Brother 25. Um, and uh, then we'll, we'll have a podcast afterward as well. Um, I can tell you that uh, one Amon Adwin, before the season even started, specifically requested tonight's episode recap so don't get your hopes up but <laughs> he wanted this one um so uh tune in tonight i'll be back tomorrow morning 11 a.m eastern to update you on everything that happens today on the big brother 25 live feeds and then tomorrow night i'll be in brea for the survivor episode uh and podcast and event uh so tune in for that uh, we'll have a grand old time. You can also find me over on Instagram, posting more climbing stuff. Maybe I'll post some some live event content over there on Instagram as well. If you're like, uh, if you're missing out 
I'll, I'll maybe I'll try to maybe collect some sort of, you know, I'll try to be like a human in modern society that does social media properly, <laughs> but I don't make any promises. Um, so yeah, check all of that stuff out. Thanks for, uh, for hanging out with me here. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see all of you next time.